Welcome once again to Fantasy Fiction Focus. Uh, today our guest is Chevy Arnold on the way over on the East Coast from where I am here. Yeah? Uh, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Simon. How are you? Okay, how are you? Good, thank you. Now, uh, you, uh, what sort of um, uh, books do you write? And what are they about? Easy question to start with. Okay, uh, well, I write books for children and teens and young adults. Um, and there's, I've, I've actually written quite a few. I have a, a picture book, that's the youngest. I have a middle grade, which is uh, funny, realistic. Um, and I have, um, it's about a, that, the middle grade is about a boy who believes everything he reads, like Harry Potter and stuff, it's really fun. And I have um, a fantasy um, novel about a girl storyteller and the magic of storytelling. Uh, it's called Torn the Teller's Tale. And I have a science fiction called Why My Love Life Sucks for teens. It's about the ultimate geek's ultimate nightmare. And it's very funny. Um, and what else do I? Oh, yeah. And Ride of Your Life, which is a romantic teen ghost story. Wow, so, so science fiction, fantasy, paranormal, you, you're doing it all. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> now, now, you haven't always done this, I think you were saying that before. Uh, you, you haven't always done this. You've, you've been writing, of course, for quite some time, but you, you didn't sort of, you haven't been a kids' team fantasy writer from birth. I mean, you did other things before this. What was your sort of experience and, and background before this venture? Well, um, when I was young, I used to write these stories in my head. Um, Tor and the Teller's Tale came from a story that I thought of. Um, that's the one about the magical storyteller that um, I thought of when I was about 16 or 17. And I'd read Lord of the Rings and other fantasy novels. And I just wanted a fantasy novel that was about me and the magic that I saw in stories. And that's why I wrote that one. Uh, but then I went to college, and my dream was to become a filmmaker. I wanted to make movies, but that wasn't uh, filmmaking wasn't an option for my uh, bachelor's degree at the college I went to. So instead, I took English literature and theater studies. Um, and then after I finished that, I got a teacher certificate, and then I tried teaching uh, high school for. Uh, I think it was three months and it was for me it was disastrous <laughs> it's just it's so much pressure teaching um, teenagers and that they, they don't want to learn um, and I try to keep it make it entertaining and one of the kids in my class uh, said you know you're you're a lot more fun than the other teachers well great but you guys aren't listening and how is this helping <laughs> so it was very frustrating um, and so I stopped uh, teaching I went to art school and after that I got a job in a newspaper I was working originally in the layout department any spare time I had I did drawings and I submitted a few um, political political cartoons to the editors and eventually I was fired by from the graphics department by the newspaper manager and immediately hired by the editors who wanted me to be an editorial cartoonist which is what I did for um, seven years, and it was great. I loved it. <laughs> um, I was interviewed by a lot of newspapers. This was all in Israel. I was interviewed by a lot of newspapers and and uh, on TV and just like uh, on the radio, like everywhere in Israel, uh, because of the political political cartoons. Uh, then I opened a magazine with American Comics because I love comics. I'm a person who likes the combination of words and and drawings it to me that's I mean you could tell if I want to be a filmmaker that's because I wanted to have all the elements in storytelling at one time so um, uh, after that I got a job at the Jerusalem Post where I was an arts and entertainment writer uh, and after that I was the I became the consumer columnist and then I came to America, back, came back to the States because I have an autistic son and we were, weren't getting anywhere with his education over there. So we came here to, to New Jersey to find uh, a better uh, educational op opportunities for him here. 
Okay, so you've, you've been doing this, for, doing this for quite some time then. You've got quite the portfolio here. So so yeah. you moved into the, uh, I suppose, the, the, the book realm. Is it, when, when did you sort of become involved, I suppose, full-time or seriously in, in, in terms of uh, fiction and, and, and books and things? Right, well, when, when I got back here, um, the, the newspapers... Um, I don't know if you've heard about this. There was a time called um, Black Ink Monday um, that uh, the cartoonists protested because they were firing political cartoonists left and right. <laughs> and this is not a good time to be in the newspaper industry. <laughs> um, the Huffington Post basically killed a lot of jobs. So it's, it's a tough time to try to get a job there. And I did try. I submitted articles to different places. Um, eventually they stopped accepting submissions because of the anthrax scare and and um, uh, 2001 after September 11th and uh, they just stopped accepting submissions at all and it became and I, I realized I, if I, I have to write I mean this is who I am I write I draw this is who I am and I, I, the direction that I was going in all the doors were closed. There wasn't any. Uh, there weren't any other options. So my husband asked me, "So what do you want to do?" And I said, "Well, there's this book. It's been in my head since I was a teenager, and I want to write it." And he said, "So, so go ahead, write that." So I wrote Torin the Teller's Tale. That was the first book that I I wrote. It's big. It's an epic. It's uh, like 500, 600 pages. <laughs> and the rest is and the rest is history, I guess. Yeah. You, you moved yeah. Off there. You're illustrating the uh, well, not all of your books, but you're illustrating some of the books, the ones that have illustrations, I guess, are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, there's illustrations in the in um, Dan Quixote, which is the middle grade about the boy who believes everything he reads, like Don Quixote. It's called um, Dan Quixote, Boy of Nouveau Jersey. Um, and there's illustrations in Tar and the, the Teller's Tale. Uh, and in Ride of Your Life, there's a map of Ride of Your Life takes place in a, an amusement park, and there's a map of of um, the amusement park, and I use different rides for different chapter headers. So and so okay, so and, and these of course naturally are available to to, to view and learn more about on your uh, website and things like that. I guess of course, so really right. more about them. Now oh, uh, I I, 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 uh, I forgot. I also have a picture book, so I I did the drawings for that as well. Well, you're, well, good for you. You've been very busy. Uh, 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 well, most of your life, of course. <laughs> that's kind of thing. But now you, um, as well, uh, you're a big, um, I suppose, advocate of the indie publishing uh, uh, yes. idea. Uh, now, did you uh, originally? Uh, did you? Well, cause obviously, indie publishing is very big now. But when you when you uh, probably first started out, it wasn't as big a thing. So, did you uh, did you go traditional first and then indie later? I did. I, I tried going the traditional route, and as time progressed, I saw that um, there were more opportunities in indie. Um, I I quit after I quit quit trying to do the traditional route after about nine years and so many like close calls, really really close ones. I even had um, I wrote a book for a publisher and then she kind of flaked on me so <laughs> uh, that one that one fell it's like uh, but um but i had a lot of really cl uh, close ones i had lots of requests for full manuscripts i had um a book that won um third prize in a, a national um contest and it was judged by alex flynn who's a well-known writer um of ya she wrote Beastly and Cloaked. Uh, Beastly was turned into a movie. So, um, so I, I had I've had successes, but you know, not just not the brass ring, just not the final thing. So you, so, think, that, you think that you're, you're convinced? I would imagine that the indie route is the way to go, at least for you, and you'd recommend it for others rather than traditional. Um, First of all, I think you should always start with the traditional route because that will teach you what sells and what doesn't. Uh, it, it'll teach you a lot if you start with the traditional route. You'll learn a lot from a lot of mistakes. But the thing is, the traditional route, somebody did a survey. Uh, I think it was Jim Hines what was the name. Um, don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, he did a survey, and he found that it takes, on average, 10 years for the traditional novelist to get his first book published. And 10 years is a heck of a long time. Um, 
10 years, like two, at least two manuscripts, two full books written. Just there's so much frustration for, for that you go through. And it shouldn't have to take so long. And it, in the end, my decision was I had all the tools for indie publishing because I knew how to, how to illustrate. I knew how to lay out a book. I knew how to put all the parts together. I used to edit a magazine. So I've done all these things. So basically, what was I waiting for, for somebody else to say that I was good enough? That doesn't make any sense. I, I didn't need that. So that's why I decided to indie publish. Yeah, and so and obviously, a lot of people are doing this naturally now. So well, what sort of advice would you would you give to, to someone who's just starting out, though, if they think, well, that's it. I've had enough of trying to get traditionally published. I'm going to go independent. What's, I know there's lots of things. It, it, to, to consider here, but what is the one, maybe one or two things that you would always tell somebody to be really careful about if they're going to indie publish or focus on? Um, well, find your audience and, and write for a specific audience. For me, it was always a matter of there were books that I wanted to read, and I knew if there were books that I want, and they weren't written yet, so I couldn't read them unless I wrote them. So I felt that if I had these holes in my library, there must be other people who also have these holes in their libraries. Uh, like, like I said, with Turn the Teller's Tale, what it was, I knew that there was magic and stories. Why wasn't anyone writing a book about that? And I knew that I was a girl who who needed this book. Why aren't there all these? Why aren't there fantasy novels for girls? They're just back then. There were practically none. I mean, I was six when I was sixteen. There were just all of them were boy books. And I felt that there was definitely a, a hole. Um, of course, by the time I did sit, sit down to write Tarn, thankfully, there are, have, become, have since then, there's there have been a lot more girl books, which I really appreciate. Um, but, but again, it's about, for me, there was still that thing about the magic of storytelling. If you love stories, if you're reading books, you must love stories. You must feel this magic. So why isn't there a book, a fantasy novel that has that? And that's where where that is. So find find the holes, find the gaps. Don't write something that somebody else could have written or has written. Don't be derivative. Don't say I'm going to write the next Twilight and then write something that's almost identical to Twilight. Um, just just don't be yourself. Find what you're missing, what's not in your library, and write that book, the book that you need to read because somebody else needs to read that too. That's very good advice. And, and of course, the other thing is, uh, I, I guess, so you, I suppose you've done this quite a lot, more than I have anyway. You don't just write a book and bang it out on your typewriter, do a quick spell check and, and, and upload it and hit submit, do you? Oh, absolutely not. Heck no. <laughs> it takes me on average um, a year to write uh, a novel. And um, right now I'm writing the second book of um what the series the gilbert the fixer series which started with why my love life sucks the next book is called why it's still megabytes um and um that one i actually completed and then i looked at it and i said there are things that still could be better you you shouldn't fin you shouldn't publish it and as long as there are things that could still be better um, so I, I did a major rewrite and I'm much happier with it now, but definitely don't, don't just hit send, edit, 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 edit. Writer, I mean, a, a writer is one thing. They're like a dime a dozen. I think that was, uh, Neil Simon said something like that, that writers are, are dime, a dime a dozen, but editors are gold because you you if you don't um, edit like every single word, every single character, everything has to be necessary within your book. And if it's not, then it has to be fixed. It has to be edited. You have to you have to make it everything work. It all has to work. It all has to work together. Now, obviously, you're 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 very experienced in the writing business, and you obviously edit as just other, as I do. I edit things as much as I can uh, before it goes anywhere. Uh, but but of course, there's always you're always going to miss something, and it has to go to a professional editor. So you do you, do you use a specific person every time for all your books, or, or different people each time? I actually edit my own books. Um, my my thinking is that. 
Yeah, I, I, every time I read a book now, I notice little mistakes, and uh, my books have fewer mistakes than those. And people have asked me to uh, to edit books for them. I've been offered jobs doing that. Um, so you know, if they're hiring me, why am I hiring somebody else that doesn't make a lot of sense? So that's uh, one thing. Never yeah. thought of that. No. So you, you you mentioned there that you're working on something at the moment, um, uh, and obviously, so you've got projects on the go, have you right now? Yeah. Uh, and, and when do, when are these coming out? These wonderful things. Have you got things like years into the future, or are these coming out this year or next year? What's happening? Uh, well, I'm near the end of the second book in the series. It's a, supposed to be a six part series, so hopefully that will be coming out this year. And I've also um, done a really complete outline for the third book in the series. So hopefully that will be um, not too long after that. Hopefully, I, it, probably less than a year for the, for the third book. Oh, so you're going to be pretty busy then, I guess, with that sort of stuff. Now, uh, you mentioned, uh, I think, uh, uh, when we were chatting before, uh, about what, what would you uh, say is the most, I suppose, crucial element that you have to have in a good science fiction and fantasy story? What, what, what would that be if there's one main thing or the one you can think of? The, um, the most important thing. Um, well, I think you have to have a character that leaves the, the reader from the start, that makes the reader want to see something happen. Because otherwise, they're not going to continue. It's, it's a hook. Otherwise, the kid, the reader's not going to continue reading. Um, like uh, in Why My Life Life Sucks, it starts with Gilbert. He's he's basically dying. He's just been bit by a vampire, and he's dying. And you you have to know. I mean, is he going to be a vampire when he, he wakes up, or he's he going to be dead? <laughs> you have to know what's going to happen next. I think that's the most important element of any story, not just science fiction. Uh, I think, yes, I was discussing that last night with the class I was teaching. We were talking about uh, beginnings to stories, and there's often a tendency with people when they're first starting. It, it, yes, there's a there's backstory that they have to reveal, and it's like, well, three or four chapters in, you're finally getting to the first bit of action. Backstory can be dropped into the story in, in little segments as you go along. But um, yes, you've got somebody's dying of a vampire bite. Great, or says. <laughs> Some car crash, somebody's about to be killed with a big sword, somebody's fell off a cliff, a mysterious stranger's appeared in the darkness, whatever it is. And then, because as you know, if with children, if they put a book down, they don't pick it up again. Uh, Absolutely. Or young adult. Yeah. So um, you're. I know, so go ahead. Uh, sorry. Um, I, I know somebody um, who wrote a book um, that I saw. I don't know if it was published yet. Um, was a. Uh, in the critique group that um, I was a part of, the my problem with the book was that the the whole point of the of the world that she created was that people don't care about anything, and I had a really difficult time with this particular story because if nobody cares about anything, why should I care? And that is really important. You need you need the reader to care. You need to give the readers the reader a reason to care. Otherwise, they're not going to read the book. I think you find that too. I know I've seen uh, lots of websites and things that people talk about, um, which are how to write a book. It's like a checklist of how to write a book. But of course, you have to have an idea to start with. And I think as well, people uh, uh, sometimes get confused by, yeah, I'm going to create a wonderful character. Well, that's nice. But if all they do is go shopping or do laundry, <laughs> something has to happen to them. The character is great, but you have to have an idea and you have to have a story as well. Or which one comes first, I'm not sure, but character on its own is not going to work, is it? Right, exactly. Yeah, it has to be. I mean, if Harry Potter was just an ordinary kid, if he'd, if he'd never gone to a wizard school, I don't think we'd be reading his books. Right. Yeah. So, and and he, he, um, he, uh, Harry has problems, and that, when, when, a per, when a reader reads a problem, then the first thing they they want to know is what's the solution to this problem? How is the is it going to be resolved? And that is so important to be a, to have that at the start of a book, and and to keep it going throughout the story. And of course, in his case, because he, the, 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 he, that's what hero's journey in his case, but in his case, it's a series of books. He's journeying through his school life, not just through an adventure. It's, it's, it's like seven years or eight years of his, his life or something. Now, just on that topic, though, we were talking about before we started uh, with, 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 um, with the whole Harry, uh, 
Harry Potter thing. Uh, are your books specifically written for uh, for girl readers or for both or boys and girls? Um. Well, uh, it's it's for they're written for both. I I do think that girls would probably have an easier time relating to Taran, um, the magical storyteller, because that is a very much a a um, a world where being a girl is a problem for her. And I think girls can relate to that more. Um, but uh, Why My Love Life Sucks is about the ultimate male uh, teenage geek. And um, I think that even though girls love the book too, I, I think that's more of something that, that well, any geek actually can relate to it, <laughs> boy or girl. Um, and uh, Ride of Your Life is kind of different for a romance because it's written from both the male and female point of view. So, um, and I think the male point of view is not this over romanticized male point of view. It's just a very realistic male point of view and guys read it and they're like, wow, this is a guy character I can relate to in a romance. How, how is this possible? I, uh, one, one person wrote to me and said, uh, shame on you. You made a 40 year old man cry. <laughs> With uh, Ride is, of Your Life. Is this, a, is this a paranormal or fantasy science fiction romance? Um, yeah, this is a um, this is a story about a uh, teenage girl ghost who is in an amusement park, and she has a um, another. There's another ghost there who's her her buddy, and then um, another teenage uh, teenager dies there. It's a boy, and they fall in love. Um, so it's, yeah, it's definitely, it, it's a very, in a way it's a kind of like, it's not, you wouldn't call it a paranormal romance because there's something about that, uh, that implies that it's, uh, melodramatic <laughs> and this isn't, it's not, it's very realistic. It's, I, I once met an editor at a, um, Society of Children Book Writers and Illustrators Conference, um, and he the subject of romance came up and I said, I, I guess probably because maybe because of this particular book. And I said that I have a problem writing romance be and he asked why. And I said, well, because it's often written so wrong, it's not real. This is not how people kiss for the first time. It's just not right. It does. It never feels right in a romance novel. So he said, don't write it then. And so and that was a very freeing thought. You know, if, if that's what I thought romance was and I didn't want to write it, I should not write it that way. And I wrote it completely different. I wrote it the way I see romance. And I think it created a much more realistic love story. Okay. Well, we, obviously we've had, we had Harry Potter, of course, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 it was once a very big thing and things that came around at the same time with the Percy Jackson series and everything. Then we had Twilight and, uh, and after and, and vampires were everywhere. And then zombies appeared to be everywhere, and probably still do. Uh, so, what is the next thing? What's the next thing going to be? Do we? Do you have any idea? Have you seen anything bubbling under that you think, oh, next it's going to be elves or pixies or back to vampires or werewolves? What's What's it going to be? I think that uh, what I'm seeing is um, a love of all things geek, all things nerd, all things that you could sell at Comic Con, and. It hasn't arrived yet in, in uh, young adult fiction, except for, well, my book, um, Why My Love Life Sucks. And I think that that is a hole that we really need to see um, filled. And I'm really hoping to be a part of that. It started with the Big Bang Theory, but um, like nowadays it's everywhere. Everything Comic-Con and also the Avengers movie. Nowadays, everything that, that would fit in Comic-Con is really big. Now let's just bring that into this world, <laughs> into into children's books and and young adult. Okay, so now you mentioned Comic Con there and, and the comic expositions and, and, and shows things. Now, do you, do you go to these as a uh, to promote your books as as an author, or do you go as a as a fan, or or, or, or but I guess you could do both. But what's your primary reason for going attending events like that? Um, I go. Uh, as a pro, um, they they give like uh, New York City Comic Con. There's um, Thursday is pro day, and they give uh, free tickets to professionals, and that includes publishers. 
So I go to educate myself to find out what's going on. There's always there are always uh, publishers there, and they always talk about um, they talk about YA as well, but all, all different kinds of publishing, games publishing, comic book publishing, and all that's very interesting. So I basically go to learn. Yeah, and is this coming up soon? Have we got one coming up soon? It's like it's early April now. Is one coming up for you? No, um, it's uh, I think the New York City one is September. Uh, yes, yeah, so if we have one here in Calgary in Western Canada, right, it's next week, and we it's it's a very cool. large. Event. Have a booth there with some other people, and we're going to sell some books. And but it's not just about selling books; it's about meeting. It's about obviously seeing everything that's going on. But you do get to meet a lot of people and hand out a lot of business cards. And it's a great um, place to be. That's uh, my books are you know the science fiction, the fantasy, time travel, superhero. It's a, it's a good fit, you know, this, yeah. as as yours would be too. So. Well, anyways, well, 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 thank you for being with us today. It's been a very uh, enlightening. Uh, we could probably talk um, for a very long time about the indie thing. I think some people viewing this will probably be very interested in that. Uh, we hear a lot about um, uh, e-books and how you know you can make billions every hour from e-books for some people. But an indie publisher is, is, is a different thing altogether, and, and someone who's not just you know just writing a book and, and making an e-book. So. So thank you for being with us, and uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, uh, your um, website and everything will be posted when we get the YouTube video on there. Thanks. Thanks for being with us, and we'll uh, we'll uh, talk to you again soon, I'm sure. Yeah, I'd love that. Thank you. Bye, Simon.